And um, I was diagnosed with depression when I was 11, and from then on I was very suicidal. Um, and on medication, I started self-harming from when I was 12, and I would cut and burn myself. I had a problem with um, social phobias. I have a borderline personality disorder, depression and anxiety, um, and I still struggle sometimes with self-harm. My lowest point was a few years ago. Um, I had a breakdown in my marriage and I lost my marital home. I ended up homeless, um, staying in temporary accommodation, um, not living the best type of life, drinking, and um, very low point. And um, I remember every day I would wake up and just feel like it was a huge burden that I had to get out of bed. I felt like um, it's a huge dark cloud surrounded me constantly. and. The slightest little thing would just make me cry and I would think this is it, I can't do this anymore. I felt like every day was just a punishment and there was no happiness in my life at all. I started to seek help um, completely when I was pregnant because I was still having the same feelings that I'd had prior to being pregnant and when you're pregnant it's not a wise idea to be suicidal. I always felt it would be a bad mum even when I was pregnant, even right up to having her. I just, I couldn't see me having the emotion that I needed to, to love her as much as what I do. Um, I never loved myself and I never liked myself. And when she was born, it was a major wake up call to me because even if I don't think that I'm worth something, she has to think that I'm worth something because I'm her mum and she's only gonna have me and I'm only gonna have her. So I have to be there for her. One of the links between mental health and the climbing wall is the metaphor of the journey. And it has been written that the social exclusion is a bit like a wall, a wall that prevents people from accessing mainstream services. Um, and one part of that wall is staff attitudes as well, that we somehow set a roof on what people can achieve and after they've had a mental health problem. We love this because this gives such a positive message to people that we expect people to get better, to get stronger, and maybe to go on and do things in their lives that they've never done before, much greater, much better. So we, it, for us as a staff group, it really it, it shows our commitment to people getting well and going on and having full and active lives. Um, and it's, our wall is not a wall of exclusion, it's a wall of social inclusion. Risk assessment is very important and we have to involve our colleagues in the OT department and all the other AHPs that are involved um, with that patient at that time and also we in, um, involve the consultants um, just to get that collaboration and what everything's going on with, um, with that patient at that time, making sure that we're covered every risk but you know, it's to support, to support that patient and the patient has to be involved as well and um, we get the OT to go down with the with the patient the first time and introduce them to the climbing wall and make sure that they're aware of what's going on at you know, every point. Starting getting ready to go on the, the large wall and to climb to the top with the harness and everything like that. It is terrifying for me because I'm so scared of heights. Um, I'll always panic at the bottom, but you have to be able to overcome that to, to get anywhere. And to be able to do that on the wall is just an incentive to do it elsewhere. And when you start climbing, you get the feeling that you're, you're going that little bit further just to get up there. You do get scared and you do panic, but you have to be able to control that. Um, it's hard, but it's possible. One thing about people's stories in the climbing wall is people often say that this is a challenge and it feels like an indefeatable challenge. Um, and they get there and practice and practice and practice and, and achieve and get beyond that challenge. So people's stories change as they're in the climbing wall. Um, obviously, we, allied health professions aren't the only people involved, and our nursing colleagues and psychology colleagues often, often bring with, add techniques and, and give people techniques that they can come and practice on the wall. Because the wall is about putting into practice psychological techniques. It's not about, it's not about talking about them a lot of the time, it's about practicing them.
as a nurse it's really important that we actually work with our colleagues in the HP department and that's the OTs, the physios, the dietitians, physiotherapists, everybody that's involved in the patient at that time you know, and make sure that we're providing the care that the patient needs in the acute setting and to promote the recovery for that patient. I hope they'll get recognition, better recognition with their mental health of the different roles that they all play. I think also recognition from other mental health um, staff that they have a very unique perspective, particularly around users. Yeah, I would think that the group members, just like any member of the public really who comes climbing, obviously health benefits from taking up a sport, but climbing definitely teaches you a bit of self-belief. Yeah, if you can get on and keep trying things that you're maybe finding quite hard the first few times you come to the wall, but after you've had a few sessions, your personal confidence lifts a bit and, and you get on really well. It's the best place to start because you can put into practice at the wall things that you ne not necessarily have the confidence to do in the outside world until you do it on the wall. And if you can face your fears on that wall and reach it to the top, you can do anything. And you understand that once once you've done it. You just have to be willing to give it a go, even if you are scared. You just have to put faith in the people that are holding you and a bit of faith in yourself. Our groups are just part of a person's recovery journey and what's important for us is any short-term interventions that we do have to translate into something long-term in people's lives. Our ideal groups are situations where we as staff get discharged at the end of the day because we've, we've placed our groups in situations that are real for people and people can carry on doing what they're doing for the rest of their lives if they're interested. Because of this, we're really having to think about where we sit and our, and our partners and being, being the best place to make sure that the groups and the activities we run can be part of people's lives for as long as they want them to be because they're important. People are telling us they're important in their recovery. What we have to look at is that the service actually works with the patient and works with what's going on in their community. Um, and it's like using services like the, the sports centre that's there, it's there. Why should we then try and work out a, you know, a programme that you know, we can do in the hospital when that isn't going to be available to the patient when they're discharged? You know, we have to be there and what's going on in every other community. Um, you know, what, what is it that the patient wants to do? You know, and that is the important thing. Get the service around the patient, not the patient fitting into what we can deliver. I think I'd particularly like to see from a user's perspective that they're much more aware of um, AHPs in community because the stories they've been telling me currently is that they get a lot of services in hospital but the community resources are less well available. I think our strategy is trying to address that around early access and things like that. So I'm hoping that one of the things will be that they're much more informed about AHPs, they've got much quicker access to them and particularly within the community. So that's the kind of things that I'd be hoping, certainly from a user's user perspective that we would we'll have done in three years time. We just enjoy working with groups in the wall regardless of their ability but if you can take somebody in who's maybe a bit shy or a bit they hold back a bit because they're not very confident if you can get them to the top of a few routes and you see the smiles on their faces it makes it all worthwhile. Uh, we're aware that the group who's been using the wall have had mental health problems but it's not something that's stood in their way from getting better at it, gaining confidence, and at the end of the day, they're all individual people. They're not people with troubles. They're just like any other climber who comes to use the wall. The support from the people that are already at the group um, is remarkable. They're always there to egg you on, and you feel comfortable to egg them on as well and make sure that they're comfortable. Um, the therapists make sure that you're 100% okay with everything. You go at your own pace, and um, it's good fun to be with these people. Um, me and Grant are competitive towards each other a little bit and we have different styles of climbing but we have a lot of fun with that and we always respect each other and to trust each other is phenomenal because when you've not had trust in anyone, to be able to trust somebody to hold your weight on a wall, that's an achievement in itself but everybody sees each other's achievements as their own. It's individual to them and everybody respects that and enjoys it with each other. I think the group in general have all benefited from coming to the climbing wall. They've gelled as a group, they've got to know the staff. I think in particular Hazel and Grant have done really well 
their ability at climbing has come on leaps and bounds in the last two months. They've definitely had a bit of good training and they actually believe that they can do it now. And families come along here and join us in, in sessions and, and for us that's so important. If, if the person's really engaged in this activity, they're going to go on and do this forever and we want to encourage as much many of that person's friends and relatives to get involved as possible. I think it's absolutely amazing. She just enjoys it so much and it's brilliant. I love her so much and I love her more for achieving this. She sets herself goals and once she achieves that goal, it gives her such a, a meaningful boost that it helps her achieve other things and, and move on to doing bigger things like climbing even more harder parts on the wall. When I see Hazel climbing on the wall, um, I feel amazing and it's, it's great for me. Um, to actually think that that's my daughter's mum out there doing things by herself and achieving what she wants to do. Being a mum is all about getting on and making mistakes and learning from them and trying again. Eventually you get it right. You do exactly the same thing on the wall. You have to keep trying. There is no, you can't back down from children because they're your children, they're always going to be there. And you can't back down from the wall either because you rely on yourself to do that. You have to be able to rely on yourself. I hope out of the AHP strategy we have something that's meaningful to us as, as staff across the AHP groups, to our colleagues in the hospital and community settings and to our clients and their carers so that we can get together and work on common goals and also get together across the country and share examples of best practice and work to build these up and, and create a better service for, for the clients that that um, we're seeing just now. I, I hope we'll be in a position to um, react quickly when, when people have difficulties, not wait until people have been into a long-term system and uh, that people can use the kind of activities we have that are away from mental health services and not stigmatising at all and can get some very quick help and support to get back on, on track after, after they've had a, a mental health problem. Uh, the core elements of the strategy I guess are about how AHPs um, support service users to maximise their potential and we've recognised some really important themes in there about early intervention, supported self-management and rehabilitation opportunities to enable service users to um, step into their power basically. We really wanted to develop and have the services, the sort of crux of the Allies of Professions sort of framework and use the service users on Hazel and, and Chris and climbing that wall which I have great admiration for them doing it. Going to the rock climbing group helps me to tell my story because there's a happy ending and I know that I'm not at the end yet because I still suffer from mental ill health but I know that I'm on the right track. If I didn't have the rock climbing group I don't know where I would be at this moment in time. It's it's done so much for me. Well, my hope for the future is to be of mentally well enough that I can go to college and get myself a good career. Um, the rock climbing I see as a major part of that. Um, I wake up every day and I think about it. I think about it at least twice a day, three times, all the time. And it's not so much a physical exercise, it's the psychological benefit that you get from it, the positives that you take away. Um, and I plan on carrying that on in all aspects of my life um, until I do get well enough that I can take on the world on my own.